The Lord's Prayer. Our Father. Our Father. Our Father in heaven. Your name be honored as holy. Your kingdom come. Your will be done. On earth. On earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts. As we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom. The power. And the glory forever. Amen. 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 I would define the kingdom of God uh, in two ways. There's the kingdom here on earth uh, that believers are a part of and trying to grow that kingdom here, as well as the kingdom to come that's in heaven that we will one day experience. As a place where we act upon the will and reign of God. The reign and rule over earth and heaven. I would define the kingdom of God as our eternal home. A place very welcoming and loving and a place where sin just does not exist. How would I define the kingdom of God? It's a promise for forever with him. Anything that is in accordance with God's will, either in here on earth or in heaven. What he has here on earth in the church, um, us kind of spreading his will and, and love to others and expanding his earthly kingdom. Trying to live a life that's pleasing to God, I would think that's considered the kingdom that um, is here on this earth. God's rule over all in heaven and on earth. What we have to look forward to, um, you know, eternal life with him and, and, and with his followers as, you know, the ultimate gift to live in his eternal kingdom. The kingdom to come is something unimaginable, and that's when we are with um, God in heaven. Anywhere where the complete submission to God exists. I would define the kingdom of God as the rule and reign over all of God's creation. Well, good morning. I'd like to begin with a little fun for the whole family, a little game, if you will, where I will ask you a question and, and then I'll give you three possible answers to that question. And then you get to choose which answer you think is the correct one. Uh, you just key your answer into that chat column beside or below your screen, and we'll all be able to see your responses together. And we'll all have a little fun seeing how many of us can get all three answers correct. Uh, maybe not as much fun as playing fun with flags with Sheldon Cooper, but fun with our families just the same. So here we go with question number one. How many kingdoms are there currently around the world? How many kingdoms do you believe there to be currently around the world? If you think there are 26, you want to uh, key in the answer A. Uh, if you think there are only 12, then key in the answer B. And if you think there are 42, then key in the answer C. How many kingdoms do you believe there to be currently around the world? 26, 12, or 42? Everyone got your answers keyed in now? Uh, the answer is, and if anyone in your family gets that answer right, uh, give them a pat on the back, but the answer is, research shows, the best research I could find shows the answer is A, 20. Six kingdoms currently ruling around the world. So we'll go with that. Uh, we'll go with the official Wikipedia answer here this morning. Now, question number two. Uh, by the way, congratulations to anyone who got question number one correct. But question number two now is which is the longest surviving kingdom upon the earth? Which is the longest surviving kingdom? Upon the earth. Do you believe it to be A, the House of Windsor in Great Britain, or B, the Imperial House of Japan, or C, the House of Saud in Saudi Arabia? Key in your answer into the chat column, if you would please. I'll give you a minute to chew on that one. Uh, make it a family answer if you want to. Let's have some fun with it. Let's see. Uh, let's see our answers to this question. Which is the longest surviving kingdom upon the earth? A, the House of Windsor. B, 
the imperial house of Japan, C, the house of Saud in Saudi Arabia. Okay, answers in, pencils down, or in this case, fingers off the keyboards and digital screens because the answer is B, the imperial house of Japan. And if you got question number one and now question number two right, then kudos to you because you're in the running to be one of our ace families this morning that gets all three of our kingdom questions right. So here it is. Keep your fingers crossed if you're still in the running. Question number three is, who is the longest living monarch? Who is the longest living monarch? Monarch. Answers, possible answers A, Queen Elizabeth II of the United Kingdom. B, King Abdullah II of Jordan. Or C, King Muhammad VI of Morocco. Queen Elizabeth II of the United Kingdom. King Abdullah II of Jordan or King Muhammad the sixth of Morocco? And the answer is A, Queen Elizabeth II of the United Kingdom, who's been reigning over that kingdom for the past 68 years. And for those of you who are keeping track, the answers to our three kingdom questions are A, B, a, or Abba, as in Abba, our Father, which art in heaven. And congratulations to all our families worshiping with us this morning who got all three kingdom questions answered correctly. And of course, the reason we ask kingdom questions is because we have come to that part of the Lord's Prayer where the Lord taught His disciples to pray like this, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And folks, we live in a country uh, <laughs> that is not all that king on kingdom talk. Kingdom talk is, quite frankly, anti-American. In fact, if I remember right, right, we, uh, we fought a war so that we could be free from any such servitude to any such kingdom. And yet, here's Jesus teaching us to pray that such a kingdom would come. A heavenly one, but still a kingdom. However, there's an even more important difference, and that is this. The kingdom that Jesus is telling us to pray for is not a place that you can point to on a map. The kingdom that Jesus is telling us to pray for is a place that can only be pointed to in a human heart and a place that has been vacated at that, a place where you and I used to sit and reign over our own lives but a place where we vacated some time ago so that we could make room for Christ to come and sit on our throne and reign over our comings and goings on earth as he does in heaven. And how does Christ reign in heaven? As king, as he sits at the Father's right hand, where their commands are obeyed completely gladly, wholeheartedly by a grateful kingdom. That's what Jesus is teaching us to pray for. For Jesus to be welcomed into every heart to reign to the extent that Jesus becomes king, the king of everything. And that includes the king of me and all the little me's with me. Making Jesus the king of my life, that's my first priority. But my next responsibility is all these little me's with me 
my family. You know, God's Old Testament people were told, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. And these words that I command you today shall be on your heart. But their responsibility didn't stop there. With God firmly seated upon the throne of their heart reigning over their life. No, they were additionally told, you shall teach the Lord's commandments diligently to your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way and when you lie down and when you rise. Why? So that when your son asks you in time to come, what is the meaning of the testimonies and the statutes and the rules that the Lord our God has commanded you, then you shall say to your son, we were Pharaoh's slaves in Egypt, and the Lord brought us out with a mighty hand, and the Lord showed signs and wonders great and grievous against Egypt and against Pharaoh and against all his household before our eyes, and he brought us out of there that he might bring us in and give us the land that he swore to give to our fathers. And the Lord commanded us to do all these statutes, to fear the Lord our God for our good always, that he might preserve us alive as we are this day. And it will be righteousness for us if we're careful to do all this commandment before the Lord our God as he commanded us. Now, why would a father be told to go to all that trouble and give such a long explanation to his son. This was all done in hopes that the son would surrender the throne of his life for the Lord to sit upon and reign from just like his father had done. Just like mom, we learn the New Testament, has done as well. That's how faith was passed down to a young man called Timothy in the New Testament. Paul says, I am reminded, Timothy, of your sincere faith, a faith that dwelt first in your grandmother, Lois, and in your mother, Eunice, and now I'm sure dwells in you as well, from grandmother to mother to son. That's how it was done in the life of young Timothy. And that's how the kingdom of God can come into your family as well. That's how God's will can be done on earth as it is in heaven, as one by one by one, everyone in my family, in your family, joins you, joins me in bowing our knee to King Jesus. Now, If that's how you came to Jesus, by a good godly mom, a good godly dad, a a grandma, grandpa praying you into the kingdom, then count your blessings and thank God for for mom and dad. But, But if that's not how it was done, thank God for whoever it was that encouraged you to bow your knee before King Jesus. But don't stop there now that Jesus is your king. Make... Make your family your next priority. Make this decision. I will not stop with making Jesus the king of me. I will not stop with making Jesus the king of me. I won't stop until I have done all I can do to make Jesus the king of all the little me's with me. And you can start as soon as this worship service is finished. You can refuse to stop with just bowing your knee before Jesus this morning in in this service. You can head over after this service to our Hey Kids webpage at lvcc.church forward slash Hey Kids, where you'll find a video introduction to today's Kids Point lesson, as well as age-appropriate worship songs and Bible lessons for all the different age children and a website filled with craft projects and fun ideas that go along with today's lesson, even a conversation guide to help parents talk with their children about today's lesson, all provided free of charge with the hope that you'll make this decision. I will not stop with making Jesus the king of me. I won't stop until I have done everything that I can do 
to make Jesus the king of everything. And that includes all the little me's with me. And all you who agree, say amen. Well, I guess you can't say amen, but you can text amen and let everyone see that you're with me. And your prayer is that his kingdom would come, his will would be done on earth as it is in heaven, that Jesus would truly be king of everything, including the king of me and all the little me's with me. And that goes for all the others sitting with me and my little me's, or in our case this morning, with all those watching this service with me. And I'm here talking about our whole Christian family. I don't just want to pray for me and my biological family, me and mine, us four, no more. I, I pray for you, 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 and you, your two, and your three, and your four, or more as well. I pray for all who have climbed down off their thrones and crowned Jesus King. I pray that we will all stay down on our knees and let Christ reign from our thrones as King of everything over our whole Christian community because the temptation is to get back up off our knees and kick Christ off our throne when his will that he wants done on earth as it is in heaven clashes with our will and what we want done. Whether it's when it comes to something about marriage or money or morals or one of a thousand different matters, what's a Christ follower to do when the Lord's decision clashes with ours. Now, that's not a novel problem. A large part of the New Testament is nothing more than letters written to entire church families addressing such matters. Letters written to the church at Corinth. Letters written to the church at Ephesus, at the Roman colony of Philippi, Thessalonica, Colossae. Churches scattered all over the province of Galatia and Asia Minor, the church at Rome. There were some individual Christians as well as some entire congregations that required multiple letters of reprimand to be written to them. The most notorious, of course, being the letter of First and Second Corinthians that addressed all kinds of problems in the Corinthian congregation. But that was not the only church that had a keeping Christ on the throne type of problem. The Apostle Paul told the churches of Galatia, I am astonished that you're so quickly deserting him who called you in the grace of Christ and are turning to a different gospel. And the church in Ephesus had become so disobedient that King Jesus commanded the Apostle John to write to them saying, Remember therefore from where you have fallen. Repent and do the works you did at first. If not, I will come to you and remove your lampstand from its place unless you repent. Now, sometimes it wasn't the entire congregation, but individuals within a congregation that had to be reprimanded for climbing back on their thrones. Euodia and Syntyche had to be entreated to get along as sisters in Christ. The whole church wasn't reprimanded, but those two sisters within it were. And Diotrephes, who loved to have the preeminence, who loved to be number one, he had to be warned to get down off his high horse and let the Lord back up on his throne again. And folks, we all need that from time to time. And that's what the church is for. And that's why I'm really looking forward to the time we can be together again, which I'm praying will be soon, so we can see each other and, and sing with each other again. Yes, sure. But also so that we can look each other in the eye again, so that I can look in your eye and you can look in mine and we can get back to helping one another and holding each other accountable again. 
And that's pretty hard to do through a computer screen. The church is the only way we're given to keep our knees on the floor and Christ on the throne. That's the only way of making sure Christ stays king of everything, of you, of me, and of all the little me's with you and me, of all those who have bowed their knee before King Jesus, even those who've never met me or met you with me. All around the world, there are folks who have never bowed their knee, but who could still do so, who could still put Christ on the throne. That's why we have such an active missionary program. You can go to lvcc.church forward slash our mission support and see all the missions we support here at the church. We're, we're, we're really going into all the world and, and preaching the gospel just like we've been told. But folks, we're also responsible for going to our neighbor just down the road. In fact, now's a pretty opportune time to introduce ourselves to our neighbor just down the road because many of us are going so stir-crazy cooped up inside our homes that we're actually taking daily walks down the road just to get out. Can I get an amen from someone on that? Why not do this while we're out? Why not just stop and pray in front of a neighbor's house? And then leave a note or a card at your neighbor's house letting your neighbor know you prayed for them. You prayed that the Lord would keep them safe. You never know how much that might mean at a time like this. You don't have to stop and talk. In fact, your neighbor will probably appreciate it more if you didn't. Just leave a note and sign it so that they know you were there. You never know what future relationship might be fostered by that little, little step of stopping and praying. And then, if you would, let us know what home you stopped and prayed for. Just email the address of that home, if you would please, to amen at lvchurch.net. Because we're in hopes of stopping and praying at all the homes we can in the valley. That's why we mailed three or four of these Pray It Forward cards this week to all our active church families. If you did not get yours, you let us know. If you need more cards, let us know. Just email us at amen at lvchurch.net and we'll send you as many cards as you can hand out. And together we'll do all we can to move people forward for the Lord. For some of them, it'll be moving them forward to the floor so that they can set Jesus on their throne and join us in making Jesus Lord, King of everything. And God's people said, Amen. Now we began our discussion this morning with three questions about all the different kingdoms around the world, some of which are ruled by absolute despots who care nothing about their citizenry. Some are ruled by kings and queens and sultans who are really nothing more than symbolic figureheads of a bygone era. And I want to congratulate anyone who got all three of those questions right. I would not have gotten them right. But here's the final question, and this is the most important question of all. Final question, number four. Who will make Jesus king this morning? Who will get down from your throne and bow your knee and let Jesus sit there and let Jesus reign from there as king of everything? Let's pray.
Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In our lives and in as many other lives as we can touch and encourage them to make their, their king Jesus with us. That's our prayer. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen.